10 a.m., so we should start. <coughs> Maybe uh, let me start with uh, giving some announcement about change, once again changes in our seminar. So uh, Kasia Sanger is no longer responsible for the technical support uh, of this seminar, and I think we should uh, all thank her for like three years of working. <laughs> and, uh, we have two new people. The uh, person responsible for uh, uh, putting people into those tables and so on is Kasia Karnas. So if you have a speaker for a seminar, you should write an email to Kasia Karnas and she will respond. Uh, surely, and uh, we also have the, another technical support uh, responsible for uh, recording our seminars, and this is uh, Jeremy, and uh, he, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, what kind of seminar we will have today? So our speaker is uh, Jarek Korbic, and uh, he, will s he will tell us something about quantum origins of objectivity connected to spectrum also. Yes, 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 okay. Um, so, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. I know, is it working okay? Yeah, 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 but, yeah, I understand, but does it work okay? Because I, I'm not sure if I, if I put it correctly. Okay, so it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, it's not the first time, and I hope not the last time. Uh, so, today I will present uh, I will actually conti continue a talk which I gave here like uh, two years ago about uh, a similar subject and I've been receiving a very positive feedback um, after the talk up to until very recently so um, I decided to just continue and go ahead if it, if it goes then it goes so um, I will yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I will start from zero. I will start from from zero, but I just wanted to tell to people who saw it. All right. <laughs> or Warsaw approach to understanding. Well, I mean, I am just following your advice. All right. So I will I will talk about spectrum broadcast structures and the quantum origins of uh, of objectivity and something which can be informally called a Gdańsk approach to objectivity. Uh, it is done by um, mostly by, by a group in Gdańsk. Um, sorry, I forgot to say where I'm from. I'm from now from uh, Gdańsk uh, University of uh, Technology, where I am uh, assistant professor on a position funded by um, by a grant of uh, John Templeton Foundation, of which I am um, co-creator and. Uh, how you call it, chief executive, główny wykonawca, I don't know how to call it in English. No, PI is Paweł Horodecki. This is pr principal investigator. The leader of the grant is Paweł Horodecki, and I am the, so to say, chief executive of it. Um, all right, so, almost, almost, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I wish, I wish. Well, it's, it's too late because it's about to finish. Okay, uh, so that's the plan of the talk. Uh, I, will introduce the, I will introduce the notion of objectivity and why, why I need it, why is it interesting. Then I will introduce what we call a spectrum broadcast structure, which are multipartite quantum state structures. Uh, later, I will rush through the appearances in known models of quantum open systems and decoherence. And then I will come back to uh, more general questions and uh, conclude with some remarks. So let me start with, um, with uh, what the problem is. Uh, so uh, in quantum mechanics, generally, mm, observation disturbs a uh, system. Okay? Uh, we know it, and uh, we live with that. But then, uh, at the level of um, at the level of a macroscopic world, we do not seem to observe it because we have um, we have this feeling that the world is objective. So many people can look at the same object and see it more or less the same in the same way. Uh, so how comes? Okay, how to how to build this bridge between uh, between quantum mechanics and um, and uh, 
classical world. And actually, if quantum mechanics is supposed to be the most basic theory of nature, it should explain it somehow. So there should be some mechanism which would, uh, which would explain why, um, why we see this sort of a robust, I will use this word reality, but please don't kill me, I want to steer clear, I will be, you know, like a snake, so to say. I will be trying to steer clear from all those problematic issues. I will present you well-developed technical tool. Whether it helps with a wave function collapse or not, I leave it to judge. Okay? Uh, so, um, what I will be presenting, actually, and hold this approach, this can be viewed as one of the aspects of uh, quantum to classical transition. Okay? And... Um, so, what is objectivity? I'm sorry, I'm... What is objectivity? This is a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, but don't, I, will, I will make it precise what I mean by, by objective in the course of the lecture. I'm, I, I just wanted to give you some, some little, uh, little overview of, of how objectivity comes in different... Uh, in different um, uh, fields. I'm sorry for this slide being so primitive. The specialist in, in Gdańsk is uh, Piotr Mironowicz, who, who provides us with a very good background, but unfortunately I was a little bit too slow to, to steal his transparencies on the, on the question of objectivity and existence and, and how it was treated in philosophy since the ancient times. So I will just give you this sort of a simple, uh, this sort of a simple um, um, simple overview. So mainly objectivity is some sort of observer invariance, yes? That many see the same. Many see the same, they agree on what they see and they do not disturb. Okay? What I will be actually using will be the last thing, an operational definition given by Wojtek Żurek. It's not, but it will become. It will be clear. A big enough number. Okay, so if uh, if a state of a system so a state of a system exists objectively, if many observers can find it out independently and without perturbing it. Okay, Wojtek used it in, in his, uh, in his uh, paper devoted to quantum, uh, to quantum Darwinism. He used it as a, as a sort of a, a tool, but we, we took it seriously and we started working on that. Okay, and this work led us to what we call, um, uh, what we call spectrum broadcast structures. But before, let me tell you that uh, what we have been doing actually stems from quantum Darwinism. So we take, we take quantum Darwinism as a, as, a, as a sort of a starting point and develop it in, in, in our own direction. I will be trying, I, as you can see, I will be trying to explain it. Will be. Okay, so uh, quantum Darwinism is a more realistic and, and refined form of, of decoherence th uh, theory. Uh, it, uh, the main uh, emphasis is on the study of information uh, flow from the system to the environment. So to say this is reversing the usual uh, open quantum system paradigm where usually we are interested in, in uh, how environment influences system. Here it is to the opposite. In, uh, environment is uh, promoted to information carrier, not just a source of noise but information carrier, and uh, the question is what kind of information about the system it uh, obtains and how during the, during the evolution. Mm. Ah, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the assumptions of the, of the, of the setup is that the, actually the environment is not just one big uh, bath, let's say, 
but it's not just one big system, but actually uh, it recognizes the, the approach recognizes that it is actually usually a compound system. When you think of, um, of most models of open systems and, and decoherence, this is actually like that. Okay. Ah, and the main, uh, one of the main points, why study information which, in which environment gets about the system and not, and not uh, vice versa, this is usually done well. If you think a little bit, then you will see that most of the observations which we do, at least as humans, are indirect observation. Now you see me because there is a photonic environment which gets scattered and which reaches your eyes. Ah, sorry, yes. I'm not very good in drawing pictures in LaTeX. So I mean that the system interacts pairwise with uh, each of the sub-environment. Okay? So we usually draw this, uh, this sort of a star and so on, this sort of a star, um, um, star feature, and this means that the link means interaction. Okay? Pardon? Well, so this is related to the question many. We start with finite, so in concrete calculations we start with finite, but then somewhere at, at, at the end we are interested in a sort of a thermodynamic limit where we go with the n to infinity. Yeah. Ah, this is also a very good question. So. Um, Actually, what we have done so far, and this is already technically difficult, we studied, we studied the systems where, uh, or the situations where the, the subsystems, the, the sub-environments sub do not interact directly. They interact only via the central system. It doesn't matter. It does not. It, it does not matter. Yes, it's just a name. No, 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 no. It's, it's not the word for your story because when you come back, actually, to that definition of objectivity. Yeah, you can think of that, but you would, yeah, yes, yes. Yes, 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 so you would have to, you would, so I think photons are better. I think photons are better. Yes, 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 and then uh, Adam, what was your question, I'm sorry? Adam. What was your question? Aha, uh, why, why, I, why I do it? So I do it, I, I do it, this is a crucial point. I do it because the, the, uh, uh, all this objectivity definition, however you, f you, you define it, but the, the, the sense of objectivity that there are many who agree. If I, if I take just one chunk here, okay, then all right, I can do it, no problem. But what I want to see, I want to see the, 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 uh, what Jurek, for example, calls uh, redundant encoding of information. So the information, some sort of information about central system, gets copied into environment and gets stored in the environment in many copies. Okay, that's why, that's why I, I make this subdivision. Usually when you take an open quantum system, you take a bath, let's say bosonic or, or spin bath, you know that, that you model it as, as consisting of, let's say, many modes, but then you treat it just like one big chunk which you at some point trace over, okay? That's the point, sure. Sure, because that's the objectivity, that you have, that, that you have the, same, the same copy, the same record, yeah. But because because I have no chance. Well, 
Okay, so um, the, um, I hope I sort of advertised, introduced it. Now, the main object of the study, since we, since we need to, we need, we want to check what's happening with the environment, what, what kind of um, information it gets from the system. So the main object of the study will be uh, something which we call a partially traced sta trace state, where not all of the environment is traced out, but only a fraction of it. Okay, this sort of models, uh, I think the situation with photons and seeing is one of the paradigmatic situations. So you see me now, there is a photonic environment. Of course, a big amount of, of photons gets lost. They are not detected. But then there is a, there is a portion that the, each of us has a, a solid angle of photons which get detected and frequencies which get detected. Okay? So that, that would represent the observed portion of the environment, which since I'm interested in, in what information about system it gets, I cannot trace it out. So I, I, I leave it in the description and the rest, which disappears, which, which escapes, let's say, my, my detectors, I trace out. Okay? So what, I, what I'm dealing with is this partially, partially traced state. Mm. Uh, okay, so um, when we come back to the definition which we took from Wojtek, uh, you will see that there, are, um, there is a word of, uh, there, there is a crucial word of uh, non-perturbing, okay? That many observers see the same without perturbing. Okay? So, mm, and this has to be made precise somehow, and what we, um, what we used, actually we used, um, it was quite funny, we used the um, Bohr non-disturbance principle, which uh, can be formulated in a, in a more modern language that there exists a non-demolition measurement, which leaves this whole partially traced state uh, invariant. We took the, the Howard Wiesman interpretation of, uh, of Bohr actually positioned in, in APR Bohr debate. Uh, then we needed one more technical assumption, which, is, which we call strong independence, that actually um, not only the, the environments do not interact between themselves, but they are uncorrelated. Okay? That there is, that, say initially they are uncorrelated, that the only correlation is the correlation via, via the central system. It simplifies a great deal, but also this, this sort of uh, distills the, the essence, yes, because I want to see uh, what, uh, what, um, uh, what uh, let's say, information about the system gets particular portion of the environment. I don't want to see it co being correlated to, to the other. Sure. No, this is, um, this is not a conjecture, not a dilemma, this is, this is a technical uh, the assumption, okay? We interpret a word non-disturbance, which is in the, in the definition which we took as a starting point, we interpret it in the sense of non-disturbance due to Bohr. So there exists a, a product, projective measurement, which acts as a non-demolition measurement for the whole, for the whole state. I prepare a machinery, yes, I, I'm, I'm preparing a machinery. So I need to, basically, uh, among other assumptions, I need to, this born on disturbance and this strong independence where I want actually to separate, uh, separate all the sub-environments. And now a sort of a miracle happens that from this definition, which was actually used by, by Wojtek, um, more of a, let's say, in a form of a motivation, we were able to uh, distill, so, Proof using this, or, or, or derive using this definition, we were able to to derive a um, very concrete state structure. Okay. So under under those two pivotal assumptions, which I, which I showed you, so the Born non disturbance and um, and uh, strong independence plus some other technical assumptions, we were able to show that uh, basically the only state structure which is compatible with this definition of, uh, of uh, objectivity is the, following, uh, is the following state, which we call the spectrum broadcast structure, or SBS, where I don't have a point, I'm quite tall. Uh, so what you see here is some, ah, okay. All right, so let me explain the state. This is some 
basis in the uh, Hilbert space of the system. Usually, if you trace this out, you will see that this is nothing else than usual decoherence. So this is a pointer basis. These are initial pointer distributions. And here are some uh, signal state on the fractions of the environment, which, uh, which we left under, under observation. And uh, they have this property that for, for different uh, index of the pointer, they have uh, orthogonal support. Ha! This is a crucial point. This is the crucial point. To be, to, to, this is the crucial point. This is how, uh, how. No, 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 no. It is derived. It is derived from the definition. It is derived. Of course, it is derived. Yes, I took the definition, I used two additional assumptions, and I derived this state. Okay? And you see that uh, what actually happens is that the, 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 some information about the state, now it becomes all what I was saying at the beginning, becomes more and more precise. So what is the information about the system? The information is the classical actually information, is a number, is the, 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 the index of the pointer state, which gets proliferated, in the environment, in many copies, and because of this uh, orthogonality of the supports, it is actually uh, perfectly recoverable and without disturbance. If, of course, if I ask the, the right question, so if I, if I ask questions in forms of projectors on the uh, uh, orthogonal supports for, for different index i. Okay? So you see that it works. It is a simple state structure, but so what? No. I assure you that no. Well, what is the statement from the previous slide? The only correlation between you trace, you, in other words, you trace something which you leave in, in, in each of the informations, in each of the environments. You trace everything except of that part of information which has been copied to the system by from the from the which was copied to the environment from the system. And that is this matrix rho I A. No, because if you have a, a system which is correlated with these two parts correlated, if you trace over one, it doesn't mean and trace over two, it does not mean that the no, 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 whole system I is a product no, no, of no, this no, no, trace. No. I have the environment which is some kind of a physical device into which According to the statements, I have copied a certain, maybe not all, information from the system. Okay, so therefore, in this environment, a part of it is now the information from the system. No, but I have not copied and anything. I finish okay, and then you trace everything except of, of the environment, uh, except of that part which is copied to it from the system, and that is the. So then, it is then if I copy then what? Then I have a certain reduced density matrix. Then this is a this is technically a trivial statement because this is what you do if you trace over the rest of the system. You have yes. and that is what I understand is the matrix from I. That's why it's no, but it why should be then a product of that? So uh, because that is why I can always write the density matrix in the form of a pi times no. the pi. No, yes. this is not the most general uh, form no, that of is the most general form of the density matrix. No, it is not. Okay, in, a proper, proper, in a proper... Guys, it's up to you. It's not. I'm your guest, it's up to you.
Guys, it's up to you. <laughs> Of course not. Of course not. Actually, to the opposite, this is one of the simplest form of correlation which you can have in a multipartite state. We call it uh, technically, if it's called maximally correlated classical classical state, or actually classical 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 state. People who are doing these things, they, they know what I mean. So this is actually very weakly correlated uh, form. If I were to write down a full matrix for, for n plus one parties, it would have an whole zoology of different entanglements and, and, and discourse and whatever. But this is a very, very particular, si particularly simple form, but very interesting nevertheless. Uh, OK, so uh, what I was saying that this index become encoded. So the pointer index, so uh, labeling or saying in which state the central system is, becomes encoded in the environments, can be read off from the environments provided we ask the right question without the disturbance. So in the sense, this index becomes objective. Yes, in the sense that whatever number of observers I have here, they can find this index out without disturbing not only their own systems, but also the systems of uh, so the states of their partners and also the central state. Yes, 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 yes. The picture, the, of course, the picture is like that, that the observer uh, looks Here. I will generalize it a little bit later. Um, okay, so maybe I will skip, uh, I will skip all those things. Um, so what we were actually quite happy with is that this sort of a notion of objectivity, a philosophical notion of objectivity in, in, in this sense of, uh, in this operational sense of Wojtek Zurek, became uh, encoded into a, a quantum state structure. Okay? I've never seen, and none of us has ever seen anything like that, so we, we claim uh, to be the first here. Um, all right, so we have it. We have this, this state structure, um, however you believe my motivation or, or not. Now, the interesting question is, does it appear anywhere? Okay? What I've been telling you up to the moment was a sort of abstract general setting. So the question is, uh, can we find them somewhere? Okay, and this is uh, this is one big part of uh, research we have been doing. So, uh, going model by model. Okay, so we were taking canonical models of decoherence models which have like 40, 50, 60 years, and uh, looking at them from the new point of view. Because no, mm, I'm not aware actually of the studies of this partially traced state. So the state which has not only the system but
All right, so in, in, in general, it's, it's, it's a hard work, okay? This is the hardest work, actually, in the, in, in the, whole, uh, in the whole approach to, to, to go manually, uh, manually proving that, that we, can, we can find this, this structure. All right, um, so let me now rush through, through the models. So the first model which we, uh, which we took was the uh, celebrated uh, illuminated sphere model of uh, Jos and Zech from 1985, if I remember correctly. And uh, this is a very simple, sim sim simple but, but nice model to study the coherence. So we have a small dielectric sphere, which can be at two possible locations, uh, x1, x2, and it is illuminated by a stream of uh, photons, or actually particles. This is called also a collisional decoherence. Um, so the setup is, uh, is the usual one. We use the box normalization, and uh, actually what we are interested in is sort of a weak coupling. There are many different senses of what is weak coupling. What I mean here is that uh, the wavelengths of the incoming uh, illuminating particles is much larger than both the radius of the sphere, and more importantly, the separation, okay? Because I don't want one particle to be able to resolve the position, right? Um, uh, the next thing which we, which we introduced was to divide, and this is coming to the question how many is many, uh, we divided the environment, ah, so the, 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 the illuminating photons, they, they, they constitute a sort of an environment, okay? They constitute the, the, the environment of the, of the sphere, which is the central system, okay? So <clears throat> what we did, we also divided the, um, the environment into what we call um, macro fractions, which means uh, fractions which scale with the total number of, uh, of photons of, of environments. Okay, we, we used linear scaling, perhaps one can do another form of scaling, but we are happy with, um, with linear. The most important thing is that it, it, we, we take chunks of the environment which survive thermodynamic limit, right? Now, when you do the cal when you do the calculation, so uh, the d dependence of the coherence factor between the two positions has been known from the Jos and Zech paper, and this is not uh, this is nothing new. And and we all know that there is some characteristic time scale how uh, how uh, coherence is. Uh, f is uh, f is the portion f is the portion of the environment which was traced out. Okay, so I have, uh, it's a fraction. So I have a center number of photons, which I divide into two fractions. I divide it into fraction y min one minus fn, which I trace out, and this is the unobserved portion of the environment. And then I have another fraction, which is fn, okay, so that it all sums to what it has to sum, which is the observed portion, okay? And this observed portion, I yet <laughs> and this observed portion I, di I divide into into some uh, some yet smaller smaller fr fractions which will uh, serve at the, as those uh, sub environments okay Now, what we calculated was, was uh, distinguishability between the macro fraction states. So I grouped the photons into fractions which, which uh, scale linearly with, with the total number of photons. And we calculated the state fidelity. It was apparently not easy. We had to actually sweat quite a lot. But it was possible. And you see a very nice, uh, very nice exponential decay where alpha is, is some parameter, so m is actually the, the, the size of the macro fraction, and alpha is a parameter which, um, mm, which to a sense, in a sense, controls the angular distribution, because you can imagine that if you have a completely isotropic illumination, then of course there is no information it can carry about the position of the sphere. Okay. All right, so in a... Uh, if we wait long enough, we uh, will obtain SBS, in the sense that both the coherence takes place and, um, 
and uh, the states, the environmental states become distinguishable. And this is BS. They are scattered by the sphere, but I'm not interested in the details of the scattering. I'm, I'm sitting somewhere far away. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is how it changes. I, the, the sphere is so massive that it does not feel the, actually the recoil from, from each, uh, each photon. But so in a sense, the classical, uh, the classical back reaction is cut out. But it feels the, the quantum in the sense of decohering. Sure. S matrix. Just, just so I'm not interested in the details. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Otherwise, But I don't, I, I don't have to label them and, 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 uh, and say this is this photon. I don't have to. I, I t take chunks of, chunks of the environment, that the chunk of, chunks of the photonic environment, and that's it. All right, and you, one can actually uh, define, so why? Uh, one can define actually a channel. Yes, exactly, exactly. This is just X ma S matrix. Exactly, exactly. The details are completely, the details are completely uninteresting. Yes, exactly. You can take photons. Well, I'm using photons because Jos and Zech used photons in, in the day. But you can use electrons or you can use uh, small, I don't know, particles, whatever. Yes? This is the general, general principle which is called collisional decoherence, where you have something which can be at two, well, some certain amount of locations. You throw, you throw a, a, a flux, a stream of, of some little particles which scatter of what you have. Then they reach the position where you observe them. You are not completely interested in how they scatter, what is the time scales of the scattering and all this thing. And you observe how they scatter depending on where the scattering object is, and that's it. Yes. I just said, I just said that we cut the recoil. I just said it.
So can we change po photons to some, I don't know, light molecules? Can we change them? So, that, but this is, but, but that's the point. That's, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's the point, that we are talking about the photons, but we can talk about any lightweight particles such that the, the central object, so the sphere here, will not feel the recoil. I, I, I've said it, and this is actually the basic assumption which I will be using in the models. I have to cut the recoil because otherwise I am not able to solve it. That's it. This is a simplistic model. I know it's very primitive. Some conservation law is approximately conserved. Is approximately conserved, just if you, I don't know, if you have a big ball of cast iron and you throw feather, goose feather on it, then of course, strictly speaking, the big uh, cast ball, uh, the big ball of cast iron will feel this feather, but practically the movement of this big cast iron ball because of one goose feather dropping on it would be negligible. Ah, uh, yes, I will come to this point. I will, I will, I will come to this point. Yes, yes, you got it. You got it. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. You got it. Exactly. Uh, b okay, so this I have to skip. Actually, I have to skip now most of everything that, that I had. Uh, all right, so uh, as I told you, we went model by model. Okay? The illuminated sphere was actually the first model, and actually it was before this general theorem which I told you. Uh, we first had this spectrum broadcast structure in the sphere model, but I needed somehow to justify why is it important. So I wanted to write a small paragraph. And this small paragraph exploded into the whole theorem which I, which I, which I showed you, uh, singling out uh, spectrum broadcast structure as basically the only structure compatible with this Jurex notion of objectivity. Uh, all right, so the next, uh, the next system which you can sort of imagine is a spin spin, okay? We took a spin-spin system in a very simple version, so without the tunneling, and we were able to uh, show the, both the short and the long time behavior of the decoherence and the, and the fidelity. This is spin one half, so there is only one decoherence factor and there is only one fidelity factor, so there are two, two states. Okay, so we were able to study spin-spin model, then we, um, we were able to uh, generalize it to a spin register, okay, where instead of one central system, you actually have a whole collection of central systems which interact with the environment. Okay, what is important here is that instead of a coupling constant, I have now a coupling matrix, and this actually brings a whole nice zoology of, of, possible, uh, of possible situations because we have uh, decoherence-free subspaces. We have some counterpart which we use in this uh, reasoning here, which is called orthogonalization free subspace, or at least uh, Piotrek, who is most responsible for that, call it this way. And uh, the message is that the quantum register, when it decoheres, becomes a classical register, but they can be a protected subspaces. So actually, the, this uh, spectrum broadcast structure can be labeled not by an index, by a number, but by a subspace. Okay? Now, the question is can we. Uh, can we somehow bind it to a, uh, to a physical realization? I, we've been talking with Łukasz Cywinski, he unfortunately could not come here, uh, how to look for, for such uh, structures in the actual physical systems in the, in the experiment. Uh, okay, then we looked at the spin boson model together with Barcelona people, with Maciek Levenstein and his uh, PhD student Nelo Lampo. Uh, again, simple model. Again, I apologize for, for the simplicity, but even here the calculations are not so easy, so to say. So uh, if someone has an idea how to, how to move to less trivial models with the self-dynamics of, uh, let's say, the central qubit, you are welcome. Mm -mm. We took the usual spe spectral density with the omicity parameter controlling uh, uh, controlling Markovianity, which is here actually one has to be careful how to define Markovianity here, yeah? because we are dealing with this partially trace state and not just with the trace of the system. So Jasz Tuziemski was able to write down a local master equation for this and we read out what is the, the, what is the, proper, uh, what is the proper Markovianity measure in this, in this context. 
Mm, so we studied in the most interesting for us region of intermediate temperatures because basically when everything is cold, when the temperature is close to zero, then there is no difference between decoherence and uh, decoherence and uh, orthogonalizations of this obtaining of, of information of, by the environment. Decoherence is that is this already means that the environment has the full knowledge about the system possible. Basically, because at low temperatures the states are pure. Okay, at high temperatures. It's to the opposite. The coherence is quite effect effective, efficient, but uh, the environment is so hot, it's so noisy that it learns basically nothing about the system. Okay, so the most interesting is the, is, is the region in between. Uh, the moral of this investigation was that apparently there was no, uh, no connection between the SBS formation and non Markovianity, which was actually a driving force for Nello to study it. Um, Aha, we are preparing a um, register version of it with some nice effects there, we connected to the time of flight. Um, one more thing which we studied was the quantum Brownian motion, and this is by far the most difficult Hamiltonian because of the self-dynamics of uh, both the system and the environment. Okay? It all looks very, I know that it all looks very simple. It's just a quadratic Hamiltonian, you can sit down, write down everything. Go ahead. Okay? The point is, you, of course, you can write down. You can use powerful methods, let's say, of uh, of Hacker of uh, Wigner functions. But to get what I need, to extract, to extract the partially uh, trace state in a such a way that I can compare if it has the spectrum broadcast structure or not, this is the difficult part. Okay. So what we did was again cutting back the the recoil. So in a sense, making the the central system classical. I agree. I agree. It, it is classical, so the only so it is classical in the in the dynamical sense, but still it can decohere. Okay? Um, actually, this calculation so th this calculation has been done in in in, in a series of papers with, with uh, Janek Tuziemski, and what we have uh, obtained was a sort of a very strange spectrum broadcast structure, which is. Uh, it's first of all continuous uh, variable, and the second, it is evolving because of the non-trivial evolution of the of the system and the environment. It it, it continuously evolves, but keeping the the spectrum broadcast structure form. Okay, its precise sense is still to be understood. We don't actually we know that it encodes at least the initial position of the of the central oscillator, but. We still have to work to to understand it, and actually, this calculation was pretty. Yes, very heavy. Yes, exactly. We don't go to cathedral legged. We, do, we don't go to cathedral legged le regime. It's, it's uninteresting for us. But that's the point. That's the point that I'm not interested. Yes, there are even thousands of papers because. Yes, exactly. That there are even thousands of papers because the the first paper on the subject was Uyersma, 1966, as far as I know. But I think actually earlier Feynman and Vernon, 1963. So probably there are thousands of papers. But I am not aware. If if you know the paper where where. Uh, it was studied not only the system but the environment. I will be happily happy to, to look at it. And it's just cut out, it just strays out and that's it. Okay, so um if I may uh, the most interesting model, so that was the most difficult model and it still needs some work. I have uh, not published, but I have uh, quite an elegant uh, calculation using actually Feynman Vernon for influence functional method and uh, pass integrals. There is a sort of a hybrid.
partially trace state. This is what I said. Of a, of a certain degrees of freedom of the environment, which I, I choose them. I choose them. I take the spectrum. I, I take the spectrum. Okay, the frequency number one, two, one hundred, three hundred fifty. Yes, I, I choose it. This is this is my right to to choose it. This is my right to choose it and to see. Yes, this is actually this is actually the freedom which I have. I can ask what kind of information has this environment. So let's say this part of the spectrum or this environment, so the other part of, part of the spectrum. There is nothing which, which, which binds me to choose this or that. Yes, I'm just saying that I have to get rid of some of the environment because otherwise I'm dealing with a full glory quantum uh, uh, co correlations, including uh, some zoological forms of entanglement, and this is completely untrackable. Okay? I do not trace out the environment completely because then I'm back into the standard standard techniques, but there are like, I don't know, I think I once counted, uh, I think, 500 papers which mentioned quantum Brownian motion in the title, uh, and I don't know how many books, but I want to be in between. I want to leave a little bit of the frequencies, a little bit of the environmental modes, some trace out and some leave. And this is my right to choose uh, which mode I trace out and which mode I, I, I leave. Okay? Or this is actually uh, dictated by a physical situation. If I have a physical model where I have a physical detector, which is uh, sensitive in a center, uh, certain range of frequencies, then I say, okay, this range of frequencies is my observed environment, and all the rest I trace out. So apparently this situation is quite, it's quite, uh, quite physical. Yes? You, can, you can easily imagine how to connect it, at least in principle, how to connect it to experiment. So I guess I ran out of time or you give me five minutes, all right. So the most interesting, so that was the hardest, but the most interesting, I think, uh, application or, or, or appearance of SBS well, is connected to uh, gravitational decoherence. There has been a very active debate um, whether various proposed mechanisms, and the mechanism we looked at is, is the mechanism of, of, of Pikowski, Zich, uh, Bruckner, I don't remember who else was on the paper, uh, quite recently proposed mechanism. I will not go into the discussion whether it's physical or not. Okay, I steer, steer clear for that. I take it as a taken, and uh, see what kind of um, uh, what kind of uh, uh, consequences it has applying my my analysis. Okay, the, actually the idea is quite simple. So time flows differently and, and at different height. Okay, if you take a system which has some sort of a time constant in it, let's say, oscillator, so it, it, it will become coupled to the height. Now, if you trace them out, you have the coherence. Yeah? It's, it's very simple in principle, but actually when you look in, in, in into how it is calculated, it is, not so, it is not so simple. There are quite a few interesting steps made, very brave, I must say, and uh, making lots of approximations, we land in the simple, um, simple Hamiltonian with uh, Hamiltonian of uh, um, internal degrees of freedom, so imagine a bunch of oscillators which sits in the gravitational field. And it can be at different heights. This is the height, this is the gravitational potential, so in case of Earth it is just uh, gravitational constants times the height. Okay? And this describes a bunch of, of uh, harmonic oscillators. Okay? I think I forgot the frequencies, I'm sorry. It should be, of course, the frequencies, okay? Because this is something which couples to the, to the height. If I apply all my machinery, then I am able to prove that at least for, um, that at least for short times, there is a um, formation of a spectrum broadcast structure, which I can, I can control how close I am to the spectrum broadcast structure. And actually what controls is uh, energy dispersion, which controls the coherence, and fission information, which controls how internal degrees are learning about the, about the height. This is what becomes objective, the height. So the, al the, the, the altitude. There is no temperature. Not necessarily, why?
No, I know. I, I, I think I've had it in hands one, one or two times. Um, uh, okay, so uh, for short times I can, I can show it. For longer times I can also show it, but actually on just on, on the example uh, of a displaced thermal state. So when the oscillators are in the displaced thermal state, I have to displace it. Because uh, if you look at this Hamiltonian, you'll see that if I take the internal degrees of freedom, which here plays the role of environment, if I take them in a, uh, a state which commutes with the Hamiltonian, then of course there is no information encoded. Yes? It commutes, so they, they, those states will not simply evolve. But the decoherence will, will happen anyway. And that's actually the, the, Pikowski, uh, the Pikowski setup. Okay, so let me go very quickly through two more general results. So we took, um, we took a general Hamiltonian of, uh, of uh, the measuring form, or I finish. What do you want? It's up to you guys, I'm, I'm all yours. Yes, yes, so it's, 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 it's up to you. Shall I continue or shall I? Okay, so I will go very quickly. I've been cheating you a little bit all the time before because I told you that I'm looking at the decoherence factor and, uh, and the state fidelity, and from this I say that we obtain the spectrum broadcast structure. But this is, of course, mathematically not exactly correct. In order to be exactly precise, I, what I have to do, I have to sort of look at, uh, at uh, or one way is to look at the distance, trace norm distance, between my actual partially traced state and the nearest spec spectrum broadcast structure state. Okay? So, um, in work with, with uh, Piotrek Mironovich, we proved this sort of a theorem, which actually quantifies the, uh, or bounds the, the, the trace distance to the closest spectrum broadcast state via the decoherence factor and the, and the state fidelities. Okay? So, this, this allows to, to say if I have this and this small, I am close to some spectrum broadcast structure. Okay? So, this puts it on a more solid mathematical ground. Um, ah, uh, the last thing which I wanted to show you is, um, is the question if uh, spectrum broadcast structure are generics for those measurement Hamiltonians. Okay? Uh, this looks like very easy. So the Hamiltonian is of course so trivial that you can, you can solve it in, 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 in your head. But the difficult point is to give it some sort of uh, uh, to use some sort of genericity arguments. Okay? What we did, we, we used the Gaussian unitary ensemble to draw all the observables. So uh, the system observable, so the observable which, uh, which is being measured and the measuring observables on the, uh, on the, in the measuring apparatus, which is how I call environment right now. As you see, it has different names. Uh, we draw them from all from um, in different Gaussian unitary ensembles, and the goal is, of course, to estimate uh, to estimate the, the average of uh, uh, this minimal distance to the closest uh, spectrum broadcast uh, form. Okay, and that was difficult. That was difficult. Um, okay, this is some technicality, but we were able to get what is the uh, what are the average behaviors of uh, uh, decoherence and uh, and state fidelities how they behave with the dimensionality of the system, of the central system, local dimensionality of the environment, and uh, the number of the, 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 so the, 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 the size of the fraction, okay? And uh, decoherence dies very nicely, but fidelity, fidelity has, has this uh, peculiar, uh, peculiar um, um, behavior. It, with the local dimension of the environment, it does not want to die to the opposite. Um, I don't know if this is visible. Okay, but maybe this is not so interesting. So these are some sample plots of uh, uh, decoherence factors and, and fidelities as a function of time and as a function of uh, local dimension of environment, dimension of the central system, and uh, the size of the macro fraction. So basically, this is fidelity. So whatever, and then the different curves are for, for different uh, dimensions of the central systems and local dimensions of the environment. Whatever I do, it does not want to go to zero. It does not want to die. I have to take a big macro fraction. Okay, this is the only, when you look at the formula, you will see that this is actually the only way to, 
to dump it here yeah, because of this D in the in the denominator. All right, so uh, using this, we were able to uh, show that the, the, this average distance, actually, when the macro fraction is big enough, this average distance dies. Um, then some typicality or some genericity arguments based on the hefting inequality, but actually better can be done, I think. And um, the conclusion is that when the apparatus is macroscopically cost-grained and we wait long enough, we get uh, that results of the measurements are objective. Okay, very nice result. We had bad luck with the PRL editor because uh, we got uh, two very good initial, very good initial uh, reports, but then the editor wanted to kill the paper, so he was sending it to some random people, I guess, because the reports which we are getting were more and more random. Uh, guys, concluding remarks. Um, uh, maybe let me just say one remark, which, which actually uh, the, the, the authorship is, is, is the, the author is, is uh, Professor Zonjewski, who noticed it that uh, all that we have shown in models is connected to some sort of uh, classicality or macroscopicity. This, this cutting of recoil, this very heavy oscillator, and uh, the question actually, which, which he asked, was so: Is it like that that maybe that this uh, objectivity is just the property of the of the big classical systems? Okay, that this is a macroscopic property. At the first sight, this looks like a sort of a very, so to say, non-romantic, uh, non-romantic conclusion because we are just proving what it is, what we see. But on the other side, if you think a little bit about it, okay, so what? So let it be that, that the macroscopicity, uh, that the objectivity is only valid in the macroscopic regime, but then it opens, I think, a very interesting door to how, how it looks like, how, how the world looks like at the, uh, microscopic level, okay? where you don't have it, where you don't have this objectivity. Okay? I think this is sort of interesting. Now, uh, let me present the team. So the Gdańsk team, Ryszek Paweł Horodecki, uh, our young postdoc, Jasiu Tuziemski, Edgar Aguilar, who is, uh, who is mm, doing his PhD, Piotrek Young postdoc, Roberto Salazar, who is working on uh, generalization to general probabilistic theories, and Piotr Kwiatkowski, who uh, unfortunately left science in Barcelona, Maciek Levenstein and uh, Nielo Lampo. So these are the people involved. Thank you very much. How what? Mm, so uh, let's say there are two levels. So at the at the conceptual level, what I will be able to prove is not the fully spectrum broadcast structure, but something like this. Uh, how to call it? Let's say Ri. Okay, then I will be able to prove uh, just this, where this is just a um, state of the, of the environment. It does not separate. Full environment. Or the environment which I, which I left under observation. Okay? I will not be able to break it. That's why I need this, uh, this assumption. On the calculational level, I don't know if you've ever seen calculations where you start not from the fully product state, but when you start in all the models which I presented, when you now imagine that instead of fully product state, you start with a state which has initial correlations, and the complication of calculations, it, it grows like exponentially. There are papers like that, for example, in quantum Brownian motion, people studied situation where when, when, when there are some correlations between the environmental oscillators, environmental modes, but the sheer complication of is, 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 is huge. So it is, I would say it is both important from the conceptual point of view and, and from the practical. But you can, you can try going around it, of course. Andrew. 
sure. Uh, well, this is just a, it is just an idea. It is just an idea, but since we are dealing here with um, with uh, objectivity, so can it be that actually what we perceive as real is some sort of an illusion? Yes, because those, it can be, I am just widely speculating that those spectrum broadcast structures that they are being notoriously formed in, in, in everyday situations, and they give us this illusion of objectivity. And then we make, actually I wanted to talk to you about it. Because I have those ideas that, that maybe I, I, this is a property, some property of a human brain that we make that this sort of an abstract step. That if we think that if nobody looks, it still exists. Okay, might be, might not. But this is just a wild speculation. So then realism, and this is naturally connected to Bell problem, so we wanted to connect somehow, but let's say works in progress here. 